This is the third video in the series where I show you how I built my new bandsaw. This time I'll be showing you how to make the guides for the blade and the saw stable. But before that, I'll start by putting these parts in the upper part of the saw. I make some rebates with the table saw so that I can lift the upper guide post all the way up, as well as this hole which will allow me to lock the door. Now I can screw it onto the saw. I also screw this piece in the upper part. In my design, I have drawn some reinforcements for these corners, but after seeing how stable the saw's body turned out to be, I don't think I'll be needing them. Now I'll machine these parts that will support the hinges that allow me to tilt the table. I make the rebates according to the plans and glue the two parts in. Here I have to make this rebate so that I can adjust the blade's lower guides more easily. I screw the part onto the saw's body from above and from the side. It's time to machine the parts that make up the upper guide post. After cutting the three parts to size, I prepare the router to make a groove to adjust the guide's height. After machining them, I can glue them together. I make sure everything has been made correctly and drill a hole to adjust the depth of the saw's guide. I'm going to cut the parts that make up the blaze upper guide post itself. I drill holes according to the plans and finish the grooves with a jigsaw and files. I make this rebate with my table saw and make sure everything's alright. Now I can glue the three parts together. When the glue is dry, I'm going to try the guide out. I put the bearing in place and I also put in as many washers as necessary until the gap between the pieces has been filled. Now I drill holes for the parts that will act as side stops for the blade. The lower guide is quite similar to the upper one. It is also made of three parts that are glued together with a bearing in the middle. After machining them and putting them together, I can put the guide in its place. Using a bit, I mark the position of the screw that will allow me to move it back and forth. I'll glue a threaded rod to the plywood with polyurethane adhesive. I'll use this piece of Teflon I had lying around in the shop to make the side stops. This material boasts a very low friction coefficient, which makes it perfect for the job.
Now I can put them in the saw's guide, both the upper one and the lower one. I'm going to put in a blade for a moment to test whether everything works correctly. And it looks like it does. Now I'm going to install the table's hinges. First I need to make rebates on these parts and after gluing them in their place I can place the hinges. I'll only use one screw for now, in case I need to move them later. At this point I can machine the parts that make up the bandsaw's table. In order to make it thicker, I'm going to glue these two pieces of plywood together. Once the glue is dry, I'll glue this formica sheet on the top, making it tougher. For that, I'll use contact glue. Using the edge belt sander, I sand all the edges. Now with a 3D router, I can make a rebate in the place where the saw will be. I make several passes leaving a groove for the zero clearance. With a table saw, I finish machining the table. This cut allows me to place the blade in the saw, and this other groove is for a U-shaped aluminum piece, which will allow me to use as lead. I set the table down on the saw, check if the size is right, and mark the position of the hinges. I screw them in their place and check whether the table can be tilted correctly. This screw will act as a stop and help me adjust the angle of the table. I'm going to screw this part in its place, but before that, I'll put in the screw that locks the table and the dust collection pipe. At this point, I've almost finished building my new bandsaw. I'm going to attach the two doors using this piano hinge. With the table saw, I make a slot for the hinge. I screw the hinge onto the door and, after checking the measurements, I screw the door to the saw. I've rigged up a system to lock the door in place, using a knob and a threaded rod. It's simple, but it does the trick. I screw this last part in below the upper wheel. I'm also going to machine the zero clearance. I'll use this piece of opaline methacrylate. 
I cut it to size and place it using the saw blade itself. The first cutting tests are successful. This part will allow me to lock the table in place. After gluing the printable template onto the board, I cut it with the bend saw itself. I drill a couple of holes to machine a tilt slot. I screw it onto this other part that will lock it to the table. I position it and put in a couple of screws. Once I've made sure it works as intended, I finish screwing it in. By placing these parts like this, the cutting table will be more stable. I'll use the bend saw to make the four big knobs I need. This one will help me tilt the upper wheel. The other three are the same. One lifts the upper wheel, one is for the guide post, and the other locks the table at an angle. I'll also place these parts in the front. They will give more stability to the front side of the table and allow me to lock the fence that I'm planning to build. I bore holes for the threaded inserts and then we can put it in its place. I'll have to remove it and put it back in again every time I have to change the blade, but the process is fast and easy. Finally, I'll build the saw blade guard for the upper guide post. With a table saw, I machine these rebates on a piece of plywood. Here, I bore a hole for a screw that will act as a guide. I put a self-locking nut in it. In order to attach it to the post, I'll use this metal bracket. It will allow me to adjust the guard in all directions. Lastly, I check whether everything works as intended. And that's all for today. In a few days I'll upload another video where I show you how I built the fence.